and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e as we continue our discussion of the times that we live in, which is obviously all of us trying to get past this coronavirus situation. And so today we have a chance to continue that. Where are we uh, at this part, at uh, this time? of the pandemic and we are very fortunate this afternoon to have the mayor of the city and county with us to talk to us a little bit about what's happening here in hawaii and elsewhere regarding the response to the coronavirus and as we know his hands have been full for the past month or so dealing with these issues on a daily basis so I'd like to welcome at this time the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, Kurt Codwell. Kurt, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us. And by the way, no, great Governor. Palaka mask. Thank you, Governor. I'm taking it off now. I'm practicing good social distance and I'm here with just one other person in the room. But I want to say mahalo for all you do on Think Tech and and doing this this broadcast, getting I, a lot I of thought you were using oh. that uh, you were using that palaka mass just to make me jealous. I, you are well, so lucky. that's part of it. You know, we say, by the way, shaka for the palaka, right? And shaka when I see it, we palaka. shaka. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, you have the best uh, palaka shirts of anyone I know. Well, Mr. Mayor, you know how goes it? I mean, I, I, what's what's your well? You know, I think a lot of people out there. Um, hear you making announcements and, and, and doing what is necessary to protect all of us. And we appreciate it, by the way. And I want to start off by saying that we appreciate what you're doing. We appreciate all the work uh, that the people that are with you on the front lines are doing to make us all safe, you know. And so um, I thought I'd just, what's happening? Where are we at the moment? Well, one, I want to shout out to everyone on the island of Oahu, and particularly, and even the state of Hawaii, for all that they've done. You know, the governor and the mayors have issued orders. You know, we shut down restaurants, bars, and nightclubs first, uh, very early in the this, and then we did the uh, stay-at-home, work-at-home order. Others implemented their own orders, and I think all of us working together have made a difference. As you see today, today for the first time, Oahu had zero new cases. Wow, uh, that doesn't mean fantastic. the virus isn't out there. But that's that a is good fantastic. sign. That's a good sign, isn't but, it? I mean, it is. And the credit goes to the people of Oahu who have followed these different orders, practiced good social distancing. I was just out uh, for a little bit this afternoon and I saw masks on almost everybody. That's the kind of new normal we're going to be living with, Governor, for a long time to come. Because the virus is still among us. It just means maybe it's not spreading as quickly. So we flattened the curve. Remember, we saw this curve coming up. Right. We pounded it down. And it's, you know, on Oahu, it's four, five, six, seven cases, four cases, three cases, four cases, three cases, two, now zero. Doesn't mean tomorrow we won't have some additional ones, but it does say that we're flattening that curve through all of our hard practice. But, but if we're not careful- that must give you hope though, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, that's good news. And I'm glad the people who are hearing yes. it today, uh, you right. know, can, can take some comfort in the, the fact that the sacrifices that you and people of Oahu have made are starting to pay yeah. off, you know? You think about the sacrifices that have been made. I mean, you got the social distancing challenges, but the impact on people's lives and on the economy is something like we haven't seen in a hundred years, probably, um, since, the la since the Great Depression. And, you know, I think of everyone out there, what they've done and the sacrifices that they made to get to this point. And I'd hate to see it go the other way. So we got to keep practicing this good social distancing. We have to continue to um, make sure that that you know we don't let this virus come back. And so it's really critical um, that we keep practicing the orders that we put in place. Well, it seems that you have a, uh, your hands full with the county now. What's the uh, what's it like interfacing with the state? I mean, what's the what's the order of uh, collaboration? I mean, you work with the health department, the governor's office. How does all of this fit together? You know, we talk to everybody. Today, I've talked to the governor twice, um, once before noon and once 
maybe around one o'clock. So I'm talking to the governor on a regular basis on various issues. The conversation this afternoon was about how do we open up? You know, what is the science? What are the triggers to doing this? What when are the we? triggers? One, I, I think we got to make sure that as we go forward, we make that there's enough ICU rooms, there's enough ventilators, there's enough healthcare personnel out there to handle the virus at any given level. And also seeing that the numbers remain low um, for a period of time. You know, a good number would be 14, 15 days, it stays low or maybe even zero. You know, the island of Kauai now is saying, I think they're going into their fifth day of zero cases. Seeing it stay low or staying at zero is a way to say we can start to open up, but very carefully. So as we start to open up, you need to have the science behind it. How do you measure where the virus is? And you can't see it. So you've got to go out and test this. Is that our way of sending out scouts? Where is this virus hiding? If you can't see it, you got to find where it is and then you got to measure it. And so very aggressive testing, as you saw the University of Hawaii this weekend and issued a report saying exactly that. Active, right. aggressive testing, not passive, just sitting down and waiting for people to get sick and they come in and get tested. But well, going out and testing people. Mr. Mayor, do we have enough test kits and do we have enough equipment to, to do what's necessary? I think we're getting more. I think we're getting to the point where you can acquire more test kits. They may not be all FDA approved gold stamp. They could be approved under their emergency authorization or they could be following the FDA guidelines, which other jurisdictions are using and this jurisdiction is in fact using. The other part is not just the testing, you need the PPE. And so we you are need acquiring the, what, more of the that PPD. PPE. What's what are you for? P -P -E. PPE. Personal protection equipment. PPE. Ah, you got the I, triple P, public private <laughs> partnership. You got the PPE. Yeah, that's the that's the John Henry Felix equipment. favorite. Uh, he goes all around down to telling everybody per, public uh, private per, partnership. Private partnership. Yeah. But this is so it's the, the you know it's go it's ahead. I'm sorry. The surgical mask. Right. It's the 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 visor. It's the, uh, the, the garb, garment that you wear is the gloves that you have. So those, if you go up to Queens Hospital, you see everyone wearing PPE. Our first responders, particularly EMS, when they get called to go and take care of someone who they think may have COVID-19, they put on the PPE. Firefighters, when they go at the EMS, do the same. And of course, police officers, if they're dealing with someone who they think could be a suspect for COVID-19, they would put on PPE. We need sufficient quantities of that to do the testing. And so the city and county of Honolulu is looking to acquire that PPE and looking to acquire tests so we can more actively and aggressively go out and test folks. And when you find positives, we immediately put them into a place where they can be protected and kept safe. Some use the word isolation. I don't like that term. I think of somewhere where they can be cocooned and taken care of. And then we do contact tracing. We ask that person, who else did you come into contact with? Where do you work? Where do you live? And we go and talk to those people and say, how did you interact with this person? And if they're showing signs, they get tested too. And this is how you keep that curve lower as we open up. Is there Otherwise, any, if you're not- Is there any hope ahead. you think that we might have a universal testing where anyone who wants it can just go in and get a test? Just if nothing else, to feel secure about their uh, health? In the long term, that would be something I'd like to see. Right now, as you mentioned, the number of test kits are limited. And so you don't want to right now open it up to everyone, whether you have symptoms or not. But let's say, you know, a month from now, as more and more supplies come on hand, more and more companies are creating these kits that perhaps you would test everyone just to give them a peace of mind, or more importantly, testing every single first responder, whether they showed symptoms or not. And when I say first responder, it's not just police, fire, and EMS. It's those who are in the hospitals, in the healthcare system, those taking care of our seniors, and even our park folks. You know, there are park people Absolutely. who are in cleaning restrooms that are all open now for a homeless population, but they're concerned about contacting the virus as they go into unsanitary situations. So they could be tested too. But yes, if we have enough supplies and we're not taking it away from those who really need to be tested. I think testing everyone is, is something that would be helpful to know where the virus is and where it isn't. And even if it comes back, you test because you may not let, yet have the symptoms, you could even retest. 
This is the swab we're talking about. It's called a PRC test. But at some point, there's an antibody test, the NA test, and you know RNA test. And so as we get more of those RNA tests, these are like the Abbott laboratory test, which is not offered to many yet, will be. That's another way to test for the antibody to find out, did you have it? And are you now no longer carrying the, the symptoms, of, symptoms of it? You built up the antibodies, like you and I, to the flu. You right. know, we bit, all, right. bit up the am, antibodies and we don't get sick a second time. But the flu virus can change the next year and that's why we get the vaccine to put the antibodies into us. You know, Mr. Mayor, I, 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 keep, I can't help but think that um, if there's such a need, I, I get calls every so often from people who are yeah. saying, you know, uh, we got these, we got tests and we got masks and we got this and we got any. Is there a, like a central place where people who think that they can provide any of this uh, could go and call and, you know, find out whether yeah. what they have is actually something that is needed? So, you know, we, like you, I get calls all the time from I people can imagine, all over right? Hawaii and the country, you know, from China, from South Korea, from the East Coast, West Coast, from Europe. And we, we do have someone designated the city and county of Honolulu who takes those calls of an offer of assistance and they funnel and look through it to make sure that if, they're, if we're buying PPE, uh, that is appro appropriate and approved by the FDA and that its price is reasonable. You know, some people say we got great great things for you and they actually are pretty good, but the cost is three times what you can acquire it anywhere else. And why why, does, know, why do human either. beings do that? Why do they, well, maybe these people aren't doing that, but why do people always seem to gorge when there it's is- It's about making money. Yeah, you know, capitalism I say is a strong driver. And so people are always looking to make money. And unfortunately, some want to make more money than others. And so we want to be careful with well, our everybody ought to, you know, I, I don't think that anybody should. Well, I don't know. Maybe there is somebody out there who's willing to to give it to the people of Honolulu. Yeah. I hope I hope so. But um, so let me tell you that, Governor, real quick. There is, you know, Dwayne Cur Curiso and his his son, Robert, and his other son, Brandon, actually put together a, a hui is called Everyone Hawaii. And it's they're acquiring masks, millions of them. And they're giving them for free. They're not purchasing, they're paying for them. Um, and they're good quality masks. They're, they're face coverings, they're not surgical masks, they're not N95 masks that we leave for our first responders. But there's an example of people who stepped up, particularly the millennials in this case, uh, his sons and a, with a couple of others, Nicole Velasco, Zach Noyles, and they've come together and put together a hui and they're acquiring these masks and flying them in and then handing them out for free all over the island. Well, thanks, thanks for the shout out, because I think people like that. We, we ought to do something. I mean, we ought to readily acknowledge, maybe uh, having them acknowledged by your office or the governor's office for contributing. Yes. Uh, when we get back, and we need to take a one minute break, when we get back, uh, is there, would it be possible to get the, the number of the person, name and number of the person that someone who thinks that they can help uh, should be calling uh, in your office. Yes. All right, we'll be yes. right back. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Talk Story with John Waihe'e here on Think 
Tech Hawaii. And our guest this afternoon is none other than the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, Kurt Caldwell. And Kurt, we were just ending a conversation and you actually was were doing a shout out to the Carrizos, Dwayne and his sons right. who have been stepped up and I'm sh- and uh, providing masks uh, free to anybody that yes. that wants them, and uh, and also I, I'm I'm sure there are other people like that in the uh, in the uh, city and county of Honolulu, and someday we ought to acknowledge these heroes in a public way, you know. Yes. Just I couldn't That's help right. but think about that while we were on break. It would be really nice. There's a lot of people. When we get through this, there's a whole bunch of people we need to acknowledge. You know, these unsung heroes who stepped up in ways we'll not know unless we honor them. And I do think at some point, Governor, that should occur to tell these stories about who we are as a people. And there's some very heroic stories out there. You know, the idea of community, of, of uh, not letting any of this actually divide us, but bring us together. I, I think... Um, you know, Hawaii is very fortunate that we, we have a sense of community to start with. Yep. And uh, we, at least to me, it doesn't seem like we are letting this particular challenge uh, tear that apart. And uh, I think, Mr. Mayor, you ought to be very proud of your city in that regard. But I'm proud the- of the Oahu and I'm proud of the people of Hawaii. I mean, we, we really have stepped up together. There's some little bit you know, Pilakia here and there, but we're humans. But for the most part, I think as a state, as a people, as an island community, we've really come together and helped each other out. And, you know, there's a lot of sadness here, but there's some great pride to see the kind of things that people have done. And, you know, you as the former governor of the state, I know you must feel great pride. And, you know, as mayor today, I feel great pride. I, I, I do. And especially when I see all of our government workers, you know, people who we, we take for granted, and uh, and seeing them just continuing to do what's necessary so that the rest of us can be safe. Uh, yeah. I mean, look at the- no, Governor, I wanted to, you, you talked about the mask. I did want to offer two things. If you go to the website, www.everyone, number one, N-E, at hawaii.com. So www.everyone, the number one, N-E, Hawaii.com, and you can order a mask if you have if you if you have an, a way to get onto the internet. Um, if you have masks that you want to to offer for free, even if it's one box, or if you have people who you think are going to provide sell masks, I think the best way to do it is call seven six eight city. It's our hotline number. We have people there all the time, so if you call, you'll get a call. You'll get a, someone picking up. It won't be a recording. And then we'll ask someone over there when they get the calls for your, 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 this broadcast, we'll make sure they get in touch with the person over at EMS who handles this. But we don't want to flood their phone, their personal phone, with all kinds of calls. So again, the number, is, them all up. the number is 768-CITY. 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 That's your hotline, your normal hotline. Call That's your hotline. normal hotline. And uh, we can do some of that. You know, Mr. Mayor, I know your message is getting out there because I've seen people who are homeless, unfortunately, during this crisis, yes. wearing masks, which I yes. think is a good thing, you know? It gives uh, me mean, hope that they, they're seeing that. Yeah, yeah That's, I mean, at me least even yeah. people who can't help their circumstances are, are out there trying to uh, get things to the place where we can go back to, well, I, I don't know whether normal is the right word, but, uh, you know. And then we earlier talked about the fact that if people have things to donate, things to sell, that they, they think that can be used, you actually have a number that they can call. Uh, would it be the That's same right. number? City Yeah, they should call 768-CITY and say we have something to sell or offer for free. And then we'll get them in touch with the person at the city who is handling that. But we don't want to give their person their number because they're not there to answer every call that comes in. They kind of analyze and look at what's needed. They know what the supply and demand is for PPE for our first responders and others. 
but they'll help screen it. And if it looks good, they'll follow back, follow up with a call. Well, that's fantastic. And I'm going to call yeah. you just for one of those Palaka masks. I, I'm, I'm All right. so jealous, <laughs> you know, it's like, why does he, ah, I said, good. It's, but it's anyway, um, you know what's happening in the country right now, though, uh, as Hawaii seems to be moving along uh, pretty well doing this uh, this crisis the rest of the country are parts of the country are talking about you know lives saving people's lives are not as important as restarting the economy and uh, and the like so they are actually trying to accelerate the return back to something less than uh, what we have now. Uh, what, any thoughts about, well, first of all, any thoughts, any reaction to what they're doing? And then your own thoughts about how uh, we should uh, structure possibly our return to some degree of normalcy. So one thing is very, very, very disappointing and, and downright disturbing um, that we see these kind of protests in front of you know state capitals, including our ours yesterday, uh, by people who are the one very ones we're trying to protect. You know, uh, right. older folks sometimes, um, and you know it, this is about all of us, and we need to act responsibly, responsibly, everybody. And so you have this small minority who now want to accelerate and opening up. And if this occurs, if we rip the mandate off and we go back to where we were before. We will see a spike like we saw in New York or New Jersey or Italy or France or Spain, and then people are gonna die. And, right. and they're gonna be in the hospital. There won't be enough ventilators. They'll be put in the hallway and doctors will be determining who lives and who dies. You know, you've done so much. The entire nation has sacrificed. At this point, let's start to open up, but in a methodical way, based on science, one step at a time, go out there, open up a little bit, test aggressively, contact trace, isolate, see what happens if the cases remain low, open up a little bit more, do the same thing again, you know, test aggressively, contact trace and isolate. If there's a spike, stop, maybe retreat a bit, get things under control, then move forward. This way we'll be opened up in the long run to a more healthy condition again. Then these folks who say, let's just go all out today and you, you see know, another what, spike, what, and then we have to roll back to day one from the beginning. What's amazing is that it's being funded by these billionaire types or yes. very ri rich right-wing people who actually are not at risk themselves, except yeah, for maybe their ability the to make months. money, you know, yeah. uh, like in no, Michigan. I think that's true. I heard in Michigan yeah. it was the Du Bois family who actually started um, things like um, like Amway that are which is yeah. a good good line of products, but uh, Amway and which are now sponsoring some of this yeah. protest. And I think one of the family members is in the Trump administration. In fact, wow! So unfortunately, but, the voice. But yeah. they they are underscoring, and I. Obviously, you and I both don't agree with these actions at all, but they are underscoring the fact that when we get back to some idea of normalcy, when we have protected our people's health to the point where we can uh, start thinking about, you know, going back to work, so to speak, that there's going to be a need to restart our economy especially our travel economy and and i was just yeah. i and this may not be a fair question at the moment but knowing you i know that you are already thinking about uh how we may be able to do that you know what what yeah. needs to what we might be able to do to 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 do that in an orderly way and if you don't mind and can't share with us some of these Thoughts, oh, I think we'd appreciate it. Well, you know, if you, if you look at the rankings of Hawaii compared to every other state in the nation, we rank at the very bottom now in terms of the number of cases per capita, the number of deaths per capita. And so we are considered one of the most healthy states in terms of COVID-19 with the fewest number of cases. 
And a lot of that is because our, our, of our geography. We talk about physical distancing. You can't show that better than in Hawaii, not any removal from the rest of the continental United States, but also the islands are separate from each other. And so that's really helped along with all the different practicing that our residents have shown under our stay at home and work at home orders. So we have a very good result. The nation is noticing it. And I think as people want to start traveling, they're gonna say, I wanna to go to somewhere where it's safe. And where healthy, it's clean, yes. Where they, and healthy, and they got it under control and that is Hawaii. So we wanna come. So in one way, we have an advantage when travel starts again. Now, the, the, the thing we gotta address is people start to come when people travel, the virus travels. And so we have to make sure that as people start to come back to Hawaii, that they're not bringing the virus here. And I think there is hope on the horizon and that is the antibody test, the RNA test, you know, that could you, it's a rapid test, you get it back in 15 minutes and perhaps you could require people before they come to Hawaii, take before the they get on the plane, they take the test. And if they are clean, they can come. If they're not, they can't come. In fact, I think the federal government should get, get a card that says whether someone has the antibodies or not. And you could travel based on that. It's kind of like having a passport. It's like a health port in a way, you know, that they say you're okay, you can travel. So that is one thing that we've discussed. Well, now, I think you just made the slogan uh, for the, uh, for the uh, tourism industry. You say, come to the healthiest state in the nation. Come to where yes. you can freely uh, do everything that you want to do on a vacation. You know, what, what, that's what right. a great thought. And, you know, you know pre-testing people coming over might be a really good idea. Now, there's another one. If you saw on the Honolulu Star Advertiser last week, Thursday, they have a section on Japan every week. And a picture in, the, in it was a half a page picture of Narita Airport. You'll recognize it as you come right. down the escalators as you go through customs. And there's all these Japanese folks sleeping on beds, cardboard kind of beds with a blanket. And what they do is everyone coming through Narita has to be tested. Now, this is a, a PRC no, a test. So it's the swab test. They get it back in 48 hours. So everyone quarantines in this area until the test comes back. And if it tests negative, they're allowed to enter Japan and go to other cities. If it tests positive, then they're quarantined and taken care of. So that's another way. Now, this is the existing technology. You know, the science of swab is pretty good and you can get the results back quicker and quicker. But that's another way. So people could come to Hawaii, but they'd have to agree to quarantine until their results are, are, are shown. And then they can go about and travel throughout Hawaii. Now that's a little more onerous because you got to quarantine for some period of time. But once they clear that quarantine, they're free to go into the rest of the islands. So well, that's another way to look at it in terms of opening up for tourism. We want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for joining us this afternoon and taking time out of your very busy schedule. And I, you know, I personally want to join a lot of people in thanking you for all that you do during this time and, and, and just in general. And to you know, acknowledge once again the Dwayne Carissos of the world and, and others who are giving of their resources to help us all through this. And Mr. Mayor, who knows? You, know, you might have come up with the idea to rescue our travel industry. Well, join it's us, folks. Thank you, Mr. Rare. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. We'll talk again. Mahalo. Thank Thanks you. for all Mahalo. you do. Mahalo.